other others, he's and she's. Welcome to Endless Eight, a Kyoto Animation podcast series where we go through eight selected works of the famous studio. I am Yata, and joining me on the cast today is my co-host with the most most Kai or Clear and Sweet. Good evening, and I am extremely excited to be here today to talk about Clanad and Clanad After Story with you, Yata. I am excited also to embark on this journey in talking about many different Kyoto animation shows that we're going to go through over the course of this podcast series. And this is our first time recording a podcast together, and it's be one of eight future endeavors that we're going to work on together as we go through, as has been spoiled already, Clanad and Clanad After Story, specifically After Story, because we wanted it to be difficult and weird. And I feel like that's kind of like a, a bold move, doing the sequel, but not doing the original series itself. But well, I think it's the, you know, it's like Godfather 2, right? It's generally regarded as the better of the two. Movies. Right, right. So, so yes, absolutely. There's no way to that we can talk about Clan Ed after story without first talking about Clan Ed, specifically because of the structure that Kyoto Animation went for in this show. Um, but we'll certainly get into that. Really quick, I wanted to go over why we chose Kyoto Animation, uh, what we're doing here, and what we're going to be saying about Clan Ed and the rest of the shows that we're going to be talking about. We decided that we wanted to do a collaborative effort. We wanted to do some type of uh, content together, and we were looking around for something to talk about. We landed on the works of Kyoto Animation, because why not do Absolutely. Kyoto Animation? There, there's not only so many fans and uh, so much prominence of the studio in the uh, Western anime sphere that like it, it begs to be talked about and many people have. Um, but also it's just the, the, some of the highest quality fiction and visual narrative storytelling that you can come across in anime. So we're going through not the best, not the worst, just some random selected shows and our first episode here, uh, Clan at After Story. Now, there will be a second episode available immediately, or uh, episode one, part B. Um, and that one will be on, drumroll. That one is going to be on the RSS feed from my anime podcast, which you might be listening to right now if you are um, subscribed to the channel and familiar with the podcast. If you want to watch it in a visual, visual format, you can head over to Clear and Sweet. It will also be up on his podcast, or up on his YouTube channel. Um, episode two, which is going to be, well, it's not a spoiler because it's already out, Sound Euphonium. Hey. It's, available, <laughs> it's available on this very RSS feed that you were listening to. Or it's available on my YouTube channel, which is Yatakun, which will, the link will be to that, uh, to my channel. And that video specifically will be in the description to this episode or to this video, depending on how you are consuming it. And what's going to happen is we're going to release eight episodes and we're going to bounce back and forth like a tennis ball doing, you know, obedient things and flying over the net between these two channels physics. for, yes, physics, <laughs> for eight episodes. So of um, we decided to release the first two episodes simultaneously to sort of, you know, cre you know, cast a wide net, I guess you could say. Yeah, and, yeah get um, everybody in. And we're starting yeah. off with two heavy hitters too. Like. Very, <laughs> very heavy hitters. Um, and that well, brings us back to, well, go ahead, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, that's like, these two are like sort of my like emotional um, uh, polls, I should say, with, when it comes oh. to Kyoto Animation. I feel like one is very, um, they're both kind of emotionally driven shows and they're like right. quite character focused, I would say. But right. uh, one is like an emotional poll in one direction and one is an emotional poll in the other. So I, I, I generally find I have, a, a, I run the gamut of emotions when dealing with Kyoto Animation in general. But generally, I would say, for most shows, especially the ones that we chose, it's sort of a lol, isn't Kyoto Animation just the best? Aren't they my favorite studio? And then you have Sound Euphonium and, and Clan Ad, which is like a thorn in your shoe or a lump in your throat or something. You know, it's quite emotionally, it's a heavy show by comparison to, say, I don't know, uh, Chilibio or Monto. You know, spoiler alert right. for things that may, <laughs> yeah, which, which we will get to. Stay tuned, viewers. There's going to be um, a moment when that when a certain episode drops, the Unto episode, not to give it away completely, <laughs> but where someone is going to go of all the shows that you could have chosen, <laughs> you had to go and get Munto. <laughs> Once again, we are not doing the best. We are not doing the worst. We are doing a, a random selection of eight Kyoto animation shows. Yeah. But, uh, you you generally alluded to stuff that I wanted to talk about here in the critical reception or the place that Clanet and Clanet After Story hold in the the anime landscape. 
And I think that's kind of where I want to dive into this show. Um, but for some some kind of technical stuff, this uh, Clan Ad 2007, Clan Ad After Story 2008, there are adaptations of the visual novel of any of you who have seen this show and oh, full warning uh, spoilers, of course, for the entirety of Clan Ad in this episode and for any show that we're talking about uh, in each episode. Um, but this is adapted from a visual novel. It is a harem uh, romance visual novel for through most of Clan Ad and then kind of turns into a drama in Clan Ad after story. Um, Ishihara, uh, famous Kyoto animation guy, uh, lead director for this one. There's boards by the whole gang from Kyoto Animation, Takimoto, uh, Naoko Yamada does some episodes, Isidate, um, Takao, and then you have uh, Kazumi Ikide, not Shoko, uh, doing the character designs. God, it's thinking how young Naoko Yamada must have been during this. <laughs> like, she must have been like, like she must have been more than like 20 at, at max. Right, right. Oh, uh, and then they just be talented people. Oh, how I, well, how I loathe you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're we're old, angry, uh, crippled men. Uh, so our takes are going to be that of bamba jaded, jaded uh, people. But I, I do want to say though that uh, yeah, this this kind of Kyoto animation as a whole is perhaps one of the most famous animation studios for being one of the most well run generally and um, doing things like being very friendly towards female content creators or creating a good work environment, um, paying their people right, um, things along those lines, as, as much as can be expected from uh, the animation industry. So you do get a lot of talent like this and you do get a lot of time for them to grow and do an episode of, of these shows and then go on to create k and the rest. So yeah. uh, should also mention this was written by the clan ad was written originally by uh, June Maeda of like Anohana Canon air uh, quite, I guess quite a celebrated yeah. figure in the, uh, in the light novel slash anime adaptation world. So, uh, I got mixed feelings about you, uh, June Maeda actually. Um, maybe a sort of semi hot take and I'm not really a hot take merchant, right? I'm more of like sure. an iced beverage kind of guy coming in with some lukewarm takes about as hot as I get is saying that, you know, um, I don't really, really like, you know, X anime that people quite enjoy. But, uh, I think, um, one, I think Clannad might, Clannad might be June Maeda's actual best work. Cause I don't really rate Anohana very highly, which is sacrilege. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I have Anohana listed as something to compare the show against, and I did not know that connection, have not played the visual novel, but now that you say that, boy, that is going to be very relevant going forward. He also did Charlotte, which I outright hate. Um, <laughs> so, because so. at yeah. that point in my life, when Charlotte came out, I was like, I had drank the Clanad Kool-Aid. We'll probably talk about our like experience with watching it, but I was like... I think uh, this is going to be a, an old school anime, uh, AniTube YouTube reference. But I think at that point, I was like really watching a lot of glass reflection reviews. And uh, <laughs> hey, no. hey, 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 we're oh, all no, friends no, here. We're no hate. Friends. No, I'm not throwing shade on somebody. I mean, we could sling some shit if you want to get into some some beef wars and, you know, <laughs> stir some controversy, get some clicks. Uh, but uh, but uh, no, yeah, he, he's yeah, a big yeah. fan. He was a big fan. And I was I was on the back end of like a very, very long shown in sort of like binge where i was watching and re-watching and then watching it again for some reason like naruto like years it was literally like a year it was like a midi it was like the dark ages of in europe i had this like weird <laughs> period where, all like, where it just got so tunnel vision that i was only watching uh, <laughs> naruto and just experiencing like more i guess like traditional well non-animated works we'll say that's what i was consuming but Nar naruto kind of kept me on the path the true path but um, Clannad was one of the Clannad was one of those works. As I was getting back into anime again, it was that like, kind of like reopens the love. So I will say that a lot of my um, uh, opinions, we'll say, are going to be kind of rose tinted. So I should right. say that so, it's like it's like a first it's like a first love. Can I ask you what year this was? This uh, so oh, wow. it came out in twenty what two thousand seven, and I think I started like I sort of had access to it i wouldn't say like about 2009 10 and 11 and okay. it, it was it would have been a few months after k -On, 
because right. Kion right. is really right. like yeah, the um, Kion is the alpha and omega when it comes to yeah. <laughs> my experience <laughs> with <laughs> that's so dramatic, but it's true with uh, Kyoto animation. And um, at that point, I I didn't I I wasn't like familiar with like the channels to you know oh like a like a Reddit for example. I wasn't really on right. it because I get like. For some reason, I'm more anxious on a space like Reddit than I would be face to face with somebody. The odd, you know, um, inner workings of my mind. But um, I had just discovered Mal, I think, and it was like, oh, Clanet was at that right. point. Clanet was one of like the top shows on. Right, Al. you you have nosedived straight into the point I wanted to start at when talking about Clanet because it is such a time and a place more than it is a show i think i think for a lot of people too you mentioned coming in from a big shonen binge and then this being uh, um, something that hits you in a different kind of way i think that's the case for so many people and especially at that time especially the late 2000s mid to late 2000s that it really was this kind of um first romance or drama or you know life beyond battles that cracked a lot of people's heads open and said oh anime can be many different things it doesn't have to be you know screaming and power-ups and sword fights and i think that this be this particular one being the first example of that for so many people really colors clan ads legacy in that way because i I'm, i guess i'll go into my backstory here because i was not that way i just watched clan ad and clan ad after story uh this past week and i have enjoyed many a kyoto animation show i have enjoyed many many more a romance a drama and cried so much at anime before I have come to Clanad and Clanad After Story. So I am going to be providing that contrasting opinion. I will say, though, that I did kind of come into anime a little bit later, like uh, rediscover anime around 2010, late 2010, 2011, when Madoka Magica, um, uh, Kaon was still big. I watched Kaon as one of my first shows. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and we, and funny, we did not select Kaon as part of the eight. In yes, the spoilers, but yes, there, were, there is not as of yet planned to be any Kaon episode at all. That's, 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 it's, I'm going to hold my hands up. That's literally my fault because there's a certain other Nayama, Nayoko Yamada show that I'm just like overly with enamored the, with. The one with the bird. The, the one. Uncle Market. Yeah. I like, I'll, I'll fight, I'll fight in the ring for that one right like i will be their selected <laughs> champion like game of thrones style i will be that champion i will die on you know skull crush for tamako market and that bird dara i will say weird hill to die on but at least you're dead oh, yeah uh, i died doing something i love yeah, a pointless yeah. activity uh and no i feel that way about nichi joe which again will be one of the shows we'll be talking about yeah. spoilers yeah um, i think we've i think we might have spoiled at least half of them by now so, yeah because we got Juicy we, we spoiled we spoiled one so <laughs> yeah <laughs> what else i was Should a cat in san euphonium uh yeah. nishijo now you guys know and tomical market but there are mysteriously three more which almost certainly will be spoiled in this episode yeah, I, I, can't, I can't believe we wouldn't oh uh, man uh so yeah uh clan ad uh, a lot of tropes of the mid to late 2000s too <laughs> like like the first thing that you will notice now is kind of how archaic or or uh, how much anime has changed since Clan Ad came out and kind of defined a lot of these things. Like the giant fucking uh, uh, air eyes, you know, that yeah. hadn't really changed that much. The character designs hadn't, you know, you had the horror heat uh, faces and they do kind of look like that. And there's one episode of Clan Ad After Story that looks exactly like Kaon. Um but the the stylized the behaviors too. There's all this like slapstick humor that I think pervaded a lot of the anime sphere back in the days, or, or you know, colored a lot of the interactions at conventions in in a very cringy way. Uh, and yeah, there's there's so much that dates this show. Even the structure of the visual novel adaptations. Yes, too, yes. It's like really, they don't make shows like this anymore, and for good reason. Yeah, I was thinking. I think in 2022, this is a 12 episode series, and they just focus on a single route, right? Like that's I've yeah. suffered through many a poor reverse harem shoujo light novel uh, light novel adaptation, <laughs> and I know I know that they would not be so self indulgent anymore to get a 25 episodes. Like we would have got like the Nagasia route, and that would have been it. Basically, the, the other characters would have been sort of like orbiting him, but you you were not getting this sort of like two episode or three episode mini 
arc right. within the larger right. series itself. Right. And like, you know, the thing about that is like mileage may vary on a lot of those arcs. Some of them were quite enjoyable, while others were sort of like it just felt like a needless like detour. When when I'm putting my like critical hat on in, in terms of like um well, how would have I have done this or how would this look in 2022? I wanted to ask you about that because you know, coming in from like again with rose tinted spectacles, when I was watching this, it looked pretty good. And, you know, this kind of, uh, especially the character design, sort of like defined an era, or I guess it maybe didn't define an era in the way that like k would define an era. But it was it was like, um, I guess, in that middle period when we're kind of moving away yep. from those like super sticky kind of like Fruits Baskets, Death Note, um, Code Geass kind of characters to what would become like, I guess, the Moe boom of like, you know, the 2010s. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and, and, well, I can see you can, you're right. I can see like the like the formative beats or like the mold being sort of created, uh, probably more so in Harahi because it was like predated this, but carried into Clan Ad and eventually, I guess, in some people's minds, perfected in <laughs> Kaon. You know, I guess in the in, in the uh, wider cultural mind, anyway, it was definitely perfected because Jesus, like, if you go back and look at like anime that was released, but like within two years of Kaon, it's like. Like if you think we have a light novel, if you think we have an isekai problem now. <laughs> I will have you know that Sound of the Sky is one of the best anime oh, that I've yes. ever seen. So. I was good. I wanted to mention. I wanted to mention it earlier on. I literally forgot the name, and I, I, I nearly called it Girls and Panzer, and I was like, "It's not Girls and Panzer." <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the production quality for that one is exceptionally high as well, which is like yes. a big yeah. help. Yeah. Also, Have I'm like I I completely fuck with Moe anyway in general. It's yes. unapologetically. Yes. It's a it's a it generally totally. tends towards a slice of life anyway, or slice of life with some sort of twist. But yeah. whatever it is, like that is something I'm always sympathetic to in terms of like um, a story. We'll say. Oh, totally. Oh, totally. And and the weird thing about me never having seen Clan Ad too is like I am a romance drama connoisseur completely like i don't i don't want any fight scenes i don't care about any action animation i really don't want to talk about sakuga or anything like that uh so this being something that i had you know had on my radar but never had interacted with and never decided to seek out i don't know it, it, i guess it kind of says something uh about this show's legacy i don't know you could you could do a whole essay on that uh Maybe he will. <laughs> yeah. What what I do what I do want to say though is like there's with the it's hard to watch almost like uh, coming from more serious dramas in recent years or or more passionate romances and that's that's unfair to Nagisa and, and Okazaki but uh, it seems like every at the start of Clan Ad right every girl is either this like completely moe to the point of idiotic helplessness blob like fuko and nagisa and the and and then or there's this this like harpy of a woman that just kicks the man every time on screen and there's there's no black or white and i'm just like god i can't i why are you doing this and i i know it's it it hit differently in 2007 there's lots of context surrounding it but stuff like that would just turn me off of watching this show today before you even got to what what does amount to really good drama spoilers yeah later in so if, I, if i compare like at the time when i watched it again it's like hard to put yourself in a place um in two places at once but i remember at that time thinking that it, well one it felt very novel but again i'm not sure if that yeah. was just me kind of coming away from like literally a naruto phase and like studio ghibli yeah. as well where there's sort of an asexuality to ghibli anyway yeah. And this one is quite, you know, pure as well, but it's yeah. more explicitly romantic than I would say most uh, of the Ghibli movies that I had been like consuming as I was coming up through my anime, or, like my uh, my formative anime steps. But if I think about it now in terms of like some romance anime that I really enjoyed or some rom- romance anime that's really hit in recent years, like this one definitely seems a bit more like a crudely painted, I should we should say, yeah. in terms of like, like what are, like I guess um, a couple that I really, really liked was uh, Say Yesterday for me because I felt like that was kind of like just like, disorientating and like sloppy enough to be a real romance or at least, my, at least a romance in my life <laughs> you mean you mean sing yesterday for me sing yesterday for me sorry okay that's yeah, a, yeah, yeah yeah i didn't watch that one but should i um okay so here's the thing about it there's a very there's a couple of moments that a lot of people were kind of turned off by because you might uh, call them irrational but then i would say <laughs> then i would character and say the heart okay. is not irrational i would say the heart is not a rational thing 
Sure, 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 sure. You know? I get you, I get you. And, uh, and that's like a large topic that we're going to get to, too. And I think that uh, there's a line between contrived drama or like what I would call visual novel drama or drama for the sake of having a drama at the end of your visual novels, you know, character route. There's got to be something, right? There's got to be some some tragedy in the past that is is preventing, uh, uh, what's her face? Uh, Nagisa? Not, uh, no, um, what's the other one? Um, e, e, uh, Ichinose, Katomi. Katomi, you know, Katomi's r- uh, route in Clan Ad is just for me the most the most best cool. example of this. Or also the stage fright from Nagisa at the end of Clan Ad too. It's just like, there's got to be some element of something happened in the time and we have to build our entire structure of our character relationship around this one drama that they have to work out. It's like, okay, kind okay. of get it. So superficially, we'll say before you get all like, we all get all deep and I saw semiotics yeah. as a word that was literally in the document. So oh, it's one of my favorites. prepared for that, you know, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go. Um, if you are in, we'll say hypothetically in this, uh, either playing the visual novel or you are literally Tomoya. Uh, okay which, okay uh because you have such a like a smorgasbord of like lovely harem um right. lovelies to choose from um which route are you going like or do you <laughs> find yourself going the nagase route and knowing the inevitable heartache that will lead to or you know are you going for the more- because I, uh, hmm. you've asked me a tough question uh, already and i i kind of want to know your answer too after i give okay. mine but um i don't consume this is a cop out, but I don't consume harems like that. I, I think back to uh, what I consider to be the pinnacle of the harem of Tenchi Muyo uh, and, and how that is taken and used and how there's like not really, you know, a, a, a Sasami route or anything like that. or a, a, And most of the characters are, it's just hijinks in a can and it's a basis off that. So I don't, Maybe this is why I don't play visual novels, because I wouldn't be like, oh, yeah, that girl, the one with the twin tails and the big titties, that's where I'm at. The, one, know, with the, like, the one with the eye patch? God, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yeah, it's not it, – I don't know. It, I would okay. say that the only person – the only way this story could have gone is the um, Nagisa route. Yeah. Well, I would say that of the of the characters that we kind of encountered this show, uh, I would choose the Nagase route. I would say this oh, because wow. I, I okay. in, and in a very weird sort of way, I did choose the Nagase right route in real life. Uh, that's oh. one of the this is one of the weird things that also kind of clouded my my um, my. Um, I get you. Uh, my You're relationship projecting. with this show is because yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I I tend not to. I, I really hate this as an answer or a, a criticism a lot of people have with media in general. This idea of I need to relate to a character for X show to be you know worth my time, or I need oh, to, totally. need yeah, to yeah, put yeah. myself in the character's shoes. But for whatever it is, Tomoyo and my own sort of like history are uh, annoyingly parallels in certain respects. Um, and that's why one of those things were like well. Because I can relate to it so much, I kind of maybe afforded it a maybe like better writing than it was. Yeah. Because I'm literally yeah. filling in, you know, I'm sitting down on the couch here, Freud, and just throwing my own, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Um, so I understand I, that. I was, I'm happy I was that you, say, I would say that this, you ended uh, up. My, my partner did not uh, give, you know, die in childbirth. Spoiler alert for after story. <laughs> but uh, she is like... Like she would, I say she would be a similar like disposition health wise to Nagisa, and it's always oh, been sort of a challenge. God. And and then me and my oh. dad had this kind of like turbulent relationship where I didn't speak to my dad hey, for same. Like years. Hey, same. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> now my dad, uh, my dad's not a lovable old alcoholic. I'll say that you know it was just yeah. other things. You know, I I think there's a certain um, uh, inevitability about you know the father and the son. It's always going to be sort of semi dramatic no matter what it is, right? And um, for me, it was just you know I was going through stuff and. For a few years there, we didn't really talk. And I, I can hold my hands up and say that was on me. But at the time of watching this, I think I was right in that phase of like, oh, screw you, dad. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> and, you yeah, know, yeah. And watching, yeah. you know, watching um, ha- um, Tomoyo's feelings kind of like play out with his car- his father. It's, like, it's actually my favorite thing about uh, this, this show like that's yes. really stuck with me is like fathers and their, their children. So as, yes. like, as a male, right, it's like it's easier yes. for me to relate to that. 
Um, and it's not just specifically to Moyo and his father. Actually, Nagasa and her dad as well. Yes, There's, absolutely. You know. I was going to say that. Yeah, Aki, uh, I want to jump in because you've thrown out so many ideas in that last little bit, and I need to respond to them. First off, the reader response uh, interaction there. Like, I completely understand that. I am in no way like Tomoyo. Uh, Tomoyo. I, I, Tomoya? Okazaki, Okazaki, Okazaki. Okazaki. I am in no way like Okazaki. Uh, he has far more social skills than I did. I was completely autistic and still am through high school and ruined any type of relationship that I could have uh, contrived. So I'm I'm happy that you found your Nagi son. Hey, check this, speaking and of I, high school, check this one out. Right, how, how, I can raise you like a poor social life with all boys Catholic school. Oh, no, no. <laughs> Mayor, a lady oh, no. in sight. Oh no, I can only imagine. <laughs> yeah, it oh, was. Man. Oh god, you know, I don't want to imagine. It was yeah. bloody awful. Uh, they yeah. say that it's the best years of your life. It absolutely wasn't. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's what I was about to say. <laughs> you could not pay me enough to go back. Literal priests. Literal priests. Oh, oh boy, this is. I, 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 people aren't aware. I'm from Ireland, so you know, there's a sort of like a, a Catholic hegemony that sort of runs throughout oh, yeah, the whole totally. country, you yeah, know, yeah. and. Um, uh, Jesus Christ! That's a, like, that's a different not, novel. That, yeah. That's a different story. That's the uh, what is that? Cider House Rules, isn't that? Isn't that in the Catholic <laughs> yeah. school of all boys? School? Oh, yeah, Jesus, okay. that might have been. All I remember that that movie is like you know, Good Nights, Sons right. of Maine. The There's one no time sodomy Maine in your the... experience. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, and then you get then you get feelings of anxiety because like, why didn't the priest sodomize me? Oh, am I not good enough? <laughs> yeah, not... Okay, we are off topic. Am I let not us, pretty let enough? <laughs> let us bring it back. Um, what else were you saying there? Uh, reader response. I wanted to say that I feel the same way about one of the other shows we have chosen, and that would be uh, the second season of Free. Uh, eternal summer so uh, you know spoiler there's one of the three if you were key, keeping track at home two, yeah, two more it, two more yeah, I, I will have i have a uh, i swam competitively so that reaches to me in a different way that it would not in many other people so i completely understand that um and i i do and to get personal with it get real with it yeah i did not have a great relationship with my father i think that arc in clanet after story is the where the show is at its best it's running on all cylinders it's brilliant i loved it and uh my dad actually died this past summer from a heart attack yeah um so that like i know the dad doesn't die in uh after story but the wife sure does and you know the same type of emotional uh the feelings that you see in this show i i kind of took that into watching this in 2022 yeah it man. still hits you know? yeah that's the thing i was like i um it's it's episode 17 right isn't that the big i believe that's the one the one the dad one the dad uh, one. or, or the, when they meet the grandma the birth of ushio and oh uh, yeah yeah yeah, yeah 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 that everything was, was like, kind of like that was a very that was a very that was a big moment actually again because there's sort of like there's actually consequences in terms of well yeah, now yeah. ending aside we'll see how so, so it's exactly, it you're is. going right to where i'm talking about with this you're going right to my issues about the show you're going right to everything that i wanted to talk about i want to say that the directing on episode 17 is immaculate it is absolutely beautiful um the the pacing too like having it foreshadowed with the different worlds things when um when uh my twin tailed girl Kotomi Kotomi is like uh you know when I, I saw it coming I saw the I saw the you know the death flags and then I was like are they really gonna do it are they gonna stick with it you know how serious are they gonna take this drama how serious do they want this show to be I knew that I knew coming in through cultural osmosis there would be a time skip didn't know that the mom was gonna die yeah that was a big one also uh, um what I, I did like, and this is kind of a weird thing to say this because it's like, it's not a, like a high moment in terms of like enjoyment traditionally, but um, the post Nagasa death arc for Tomoya, where he was sort of like working through himself. Now, they, a lot of this was kind of covered in a time, a time skip, but I like, because at that point in my mind, Tomoya was sort of infallible as a character, which kind of in terms of like, as you were establishing it early on, where he was supposed to be the sort of like, you know, uh, I guess delinquent. delinquent to it. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. With with I'm using like air quotes because he just seemed like yeah. the perfect gentleman from like moment one. This ha this yeah. moment where you're sort of like uh, this is a big thing in my mind as well. Like as a especially at this period, this idea of like genetic determinism, where you're sort of doomed to like repeat the mistakes of your parents. And, oh yeah, you know, sure, and sure having like him sort of like just have this odd relation like reaction to not an odd reaction. There's yeah. no appropriate reaction to the death of a loved one, but 
his specific reaction to Nagus's passing and then like how his rela- his relationship was with Ushio or how his relationship wasn't with Ushio. This was like this, this I'm gonna literally say this is like a holy shit. I have not experienced something like this at this point yes. before. And this was this was fantastic. And it almost yes. like I know it would have been a lot so on the I don't know if you want to get to the ending now or do you want to like save So that? you're skipping over a lot of stuff, but I would I do want to say that one of the things that I have written down from the time that Tomoyo graduates high school and then he's working at the bakery up until uh the sports day arc that is the segment of clan ed after story that is some of the best storytelling that kyoto animation has ever brought to the table and i think anime can produce in terms of you know drama and everything you're saying about the themes of of tomoyo or uh okazaki uh repeating the same mistakes over and over again of his father the you know the um themes of contrasting him versus aki and uh sanai um and and just dealing with the grief the 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 ability or willingness to even go that far and deal with that grief and put that on the screen uh yeah it's beautiful it clicks on all cylinders and i literally have it written 10 on 10 out of 10 on all of it um and i think a, a large part of that is keeping it grounded keeping it keeping it real uh wonderful wonderful but before we get to that i think we very quickly just have to go back and and talk about like why that's so much i don't know i don't want to say better but like it's it's almost a completely different show than the beginning parts of clan ed after story and all of clan ed yeah absolutely because you know, don't don't you think the 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 drama is noticeably different? Like I was talking about, like visual novel drama, like like even the the what is it? The landlady and her cat, and then uh, what's the other one? Um, his blonde friend. They oh, have so, an so arc Nahara. at the start of Clan. Yeah, yeah. Sunohara. So they have a start a, a an arc at the start of After Story, and you're like, okay. I mean, I. I get it, but it's still clearly a side arc from a visual novel. That yeah, like, well, that's it. I think if you you we mentioned the word semiotics earlier on, and I think like if you want to talk about the semiotics of a light novel, and then we're going back to what would be like a very early stage light novel in terms of like how they would like how that as a medium is going to sophisticate itself later on as everything yeah. will as it progresses yeah. and you start like um, modifying the form and parodying the form or just like taking new angles on it. This one is quite a traditional one, so there's a certain you can just feel like there's it's essentially a join the dots experience, especially with like Clan Ad and to some extent the begin the first third of Clan Ad After Story, I guess, where it's like if you are well versed enough in the medium, uh, or even if you've just watched a lot of anime that have been adapted from like a light novel, um right. you can because essentially if you think of Steins Gate, which is like yeah, one of the most celebrated yeah, um yeah, anime yeah. like alongside of especially of that period as well they're literally like of right great example great example know, yeah there totally. is a certain like you know we'll say like a three episode to be generous or two episodes for like to be more realistic like mini arc or side quest that just has to be completed because you have to be made aware of the awesomeness that is you know um this potential character and like you know it's one of those things right where when that happens, when the structure is going to let you down and you're not really working on a sort of like a, a novel kind of approach to storytelling, what I'm going to start looking for is like one is just like good character design um, and humor, especially okay. with, in this case of Kyoto animation, because like I, I, a lot of gotcha. the reasons I come here is for the humor. So if you can, okay, you're working within the box and I'm aware of the box, you know. Does, does Can I jump in? Can, doesn't that, uh, yeah, working within the box and like noticing how the sausage is made, doesn't that inherently may, force you to consume it in a different way? And I guess that maybe that's what you're saying, that you look for the elements instead. You yeah. look for the humor because because that's that's kind of what I would say is that the structure that they went with here, the very hard visual novel uh, route-based structure, doesn't really do much for it as a narrative media. No, it's you flabby. Know, it's flabby. Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, but I would say that again to kind of like put myself in context of where I was when I first consumed it. Um, I think this might have been my first light novel to anime adaptation that I had seen. Yeah, I think uh, for or, a lot of people too. Or, yeah, yeah I, th- I feel like it was because I think I might have like opened my eyes on the on the medium as like a as a thing, you know. And it makes sense as retroactively as you watch more and more. As I said, the semiotics of it, you can just. There is a sort of like visual language to these things. Again, yeah. that's a video or an essay that someone needs to write. Right, right, uh, right. The evolution of the of the visual novel adaptation in in modern anime. God, yeah. that's a master's thesis. Yeah, it, like, it, it, it absolutely like, is. Yeah, oh, I'd love to read it. 
Yeah. Um, well, let me give you like this, like a, a master's thesis is a, is a bit of a big one. Like an undergrad thesis that's written well, like, okay. like 10,000 10, <laughs> sure, words. Sure, sure. <laughs> or, 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 uh, or a, you know, hour and a half video essay. Yes. Yeah. You know, go, 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 creative minds. Um, yeah, no. So I, I don't know. I don't, I, like I said, I'm not here for, or, or I would rate the, Outside of the one chunk that I would say, I would rate the rest of Clanet and Clanet After Story like a six out of ten, maybe. Uh, drawbacks for you mentioned the humor. I don't know if you laughed at any of this show. I didn't laugh at any of this show. I uh, no, I'm gonna feel uh, but ooh. there are a few points I did kind of have it. Okay, okay, okay. Wait, 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 wait. I will say when Nagisa says we have sex, that was funny. That was that was that was good. But I don't know about any other points. I I'm not gonna lie. I, this is gonna be a bit of annoyance for. I'm sure I'm. It's a polarizing character, but his friend Suna, um, oh, Sunahara, okay. I there was like that thing of him just getting like drop kicked by that yeah. the, the delinquent that girl with the kind of great off green okay. hair. The first yeah. like I was literally like it's one of those things where it's like because uh, I work with kids, right? So it's one of those things like the same joke will hit more times than you would imagine. And it was like the first time she sort of like super kicked him, and they sort of stylized it like a, it was something out like of Street Fighter or like yeah, one of those. I was just like, was oh was my god! I was just like. It just hit whatever reason. Again, it was one of those things. It's early in the period, but again, to kind of yeah. one of the reasons why I was so like enamored with Kyoto Animation as a studio is when they, in my mind, hit this golden run post Kaon, where it was just like the perfect combination of moe and kind of weird sort of otaku humor. Yeah. And, um, yeah. Like later on, I feel like there's definitely been a, a shifting. Um, I would say post Surinay which is not one of the shows that we're doing. Okay. But there was like, <laughs> Spoilers. But it was like, there's like a tonal shift with like later, pro um, and, and it's kind of like Mars, like, um, I guess stuff like Violet Evergarden as well, where it's like, yeah, uh, this is cute on animation, but I ain't laughing. I'm kind of yeah. ready to cry. Yeah. You know? I, you know, I, I would even extend that to Dragon Maid and that, that is a hot take, a spicy take. I know for a lot of people, I don't find Dragon Maid funny, but I find it endearing in the same way that, um, you know, a lot of the that are, a lot yeah. of the shows are yeah i and i would also like to say that the character you mentioned the the uh silver-haired character that is the character named tomoyo uh the main character okazaki is named tomoya yeah and i've been making this mistake throughout the podcast and i will now go flagellate myself uh in penance so i will uh, I, do, i'll do the opposite i will continue to make that mistake and i will honestly, <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah deal with the viewers uh i would also like to say i thought you were going to say when you like the humor i thought you were going to say you liked fuko I love Fuko. Oh, okay. I, lo I love Fuko. Yeah. She's adorable. Fuko was good. Fuko was I good. would say that I didn't initially warm to her too much. Like, you know, this weird girl, little lolly girl with her fucking wooden yeah, starfish. starfish. <laughs> yeah. But it was like, again, I found, I found her like arc itself quite affecting. And I liked the, um, her sister was like, I, I didn't hate her. You know, I, I kind of like liked her presence on the screen. I just, it was one of the, it yeah. was one of the, uh, it was one of these side quests, we'll call it, that like yeah. left more of an impact on me. Can, can I say that the characters, yeah, I feel the same way about Okazaki in general I, and, and Fuko uh, too. And uh, for me, uh, Akio and uh, Sanai were both like uh, amazing characters that I happen to love. And if we were giving a, um, you know, a, a couple of the episodes, Sanai and Akio would be like, Oh, easily. Uh, ten out of ten. Just their relationship, the way they treat each other, the uh, him him being like, you got to spice it up sometimes, and throwing the gecko down. <laughs> uh, and and also just yeah, how they represent like this idea of uh, what a parent should be and w what they should do, and and yeah, that role that they play in the in a show that is about uh, you know parenting and relationships is super cool, and I would have loved to have been their child. Yeah, I, I have this sort of like image like that sort of tied to Akio is sort of like, you know, uh, early evening setting, you know, he's got a cigarette and then his mouth always anyway. So it's one of those moments yeah. where he started dispensing sort of advice and he sort of shifts from like um, the sort of lovable kind of like oafish kind of character that he generally portrays to like a bit of a more like stoic, thoughtful, intro like, yeah. you know, a deeper character. And I just I've, I fucking loved those two yeah, as a couple. A couple one, it just made kind of sense where it's like. They work together in this weird sort of way because uh, she's got like a lot of, well, obviously she's got a lot of Nagisa in her, right? Like the best parts mm -hmm. of Nagisa are in Sunai and the father is just like inherently protective of that and in a very like admirable way. But he also is, again, he's funny. 
Like I, I, yeah. you, I him and Sonahara, man, they just cracked me up. I don't know what it was. Okay. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I can't, I, it's, you know, different comedy hits different for different people, I guess. And also it's like when you watched it, you know what I mean? So in my mind at this time, it was again, it was the novelty. And I guess the jokes weren't stale or not stale, but like they hadn't been done better right. in the future. Right. Right. That's yeah. exactly what I was going to say. I've seen so many animes do the, uh, do the slapstick, uh, physical, physical beat them up. On yeah, the, like we've um, all seen that, you know, pervy friend or the idiot friend, like yeah. dramatically thrown or comboed or, you know, yeah. some way to have their sort of like Team Rocket blasting off again moments. Yeah. And, but it's not uh, a dead horse trope in 2007, you know? Yeah, so I guess we'll it's, let it slide. Yeah, we'll let it slide. Well, I, 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 I praised it even, I'll say. <laughs> not even just letting it slide. I was probably out there okay. praising it. You know, yes. it established a visual language for physical comedy and anime. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there, there's the there's the 90-minute YouTube video I want to see, like the, the history of the uh, uh, the hijink uh, kind of uh, – what do they call it? Is it bokeh? Is that the word for uh, – uh, I'm going to get that confused with seme and uke and then just completely embarrass myself. Oh, well, uh, it's, if, it's any, if it's any consolation, you could have said any of the three of them and I wouldn't have known. Uh, <laughs> it sounds like you're speaking there's, another oh, language. Oh, oh, the, the, word, the word in English, I'm sorry, is butt monkey. Oh. That is the technical term. You go on the TV tropes page for butt monkey. Uh, I don't find butt, butt monkeys hilarious. So, but it's whatever. Uh, yeah, whatever. It's, I would say generally no. But what? Because I think a lot of the time this can kind of it can go to the point where it's sort of like uh, self parodying in a bad way, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like you're, you're yeah. Like I think you need to like restrain yourself with these characters. I think this this kind of like plays into like Mineta from My Hero Academia as well. A lot of people hate that character because it's kind of gross and creepy, and it's just like That's with, the with that character. Kid? Yes, it is. Okay, yeah. and it's just like within that instance, like oh, you just didn't hit it as you know as well as yeah. I, yeah. I would argue maybe it's in a heart. Well, again, it's you know you have to place it in context of when it was written, but like at that time, I felt like Sinahara was like on the right side of it because it wasn't like. Right. completely creepy or gross yeah he's or, not he's yeah. not like a pervert or something he has lots of redeeming qualities i totally get it uh and and i would say that the joke of um sanai's bread being bad and then akio running out after her never goes stale for me over the course of the entire show which is amazing because the sudahara one i was done after like two <laughs> like i'm good on him yeah <laughs> yes. i'm, I'm out. <laughs> replace him with the sister and he can you know i'll never i won't complain <laughs> yeah okay okay so let's talk let's talk about it. that's the uh man that that's the meme image i i knew the meme image but i hadn't watched it i think it's episode three or four of uh clan at after story where okazaki takes uh my that sunahara's younger sister out on a date and they have this whole okay this this is a great way to segue into when you contrive drama because how is anybody honestly supposed to take the fact or believe the fact that Okazaki, who's like practically married to Nagisa at this time when this happens, is actually going to like do anything with this like 11 year old girl? Like, <laughs> what is that? How is that actually used as a dramatic plot point that I don't get it? The memes are funny. The me or Oni Chan and that that's very cute and very funny. But like. The the fact that it creates the drama for the Sunohara arc is like what? Yeah, there's this a couple is, times like that, right? The suspension of disbelief is sort of like you got to be quite generous. That's the with word. It. That's you know? the word. And I will say that in Foucault's story too. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. In the cat story with the landlady, when it's like she the cat goes back in time or is reincarnated as a, a boy or something, I'm like, the plot is just so flimsy in this visual novel-esque way that like hey, hey i get a lot of fantasy i i'm fine with like random stuff happening but you know i think it's no coincidence that the best part of this show is when it abandons all of that and it's very grounded actually speaking and, of because we're on sort of fantastical now um how did you find or how was your reaction to the um the girl and her robot this sort of like that, sub theme that was going on through the okay. whole thing <laughs> okay so we talked about everything before the kind of okazaki graduates from high school and works at the bakery now let's talk about everything after the sports day because good god i could i could not i could not conceive of a way to throw this g drama away harder and and for some there's some element of it that i get 
but the robot and the girl and the alternate world and uh, Ushio being in the forest at the end with Fuko behind the hospital, all of that was just like, I see they were going for some type of fantasy here and you missed it completely. I, I know, and this is where I want to bring in Anohana because I know a lot of people have trouble with the ending of Anohana that has the same type of similar fantastical kind of, oh, just run with it emotional over, uh, you know, logic stuff. And I'm all for emotions over logic. I have, I have no problem with that. I did a whole Madoka Magica breakdown where I talked about the power of emotions over the power of logic. And that's fine. It feel you have to be so delicate with this though, because it can end up feeling so contrived. And when Ushio gets sick with the same sickness that Nagisa had, right as everything starts getting okay, I'm like, oh no. And then when when we go off on the the light and the fantasy, and Ushio is the last remnant of the robot person, and this is Okazaki in another timeline, I'm like, what are we doing? Who wrote this? Why Jun Maeda? I cannot. Yeah, it it felt it felt, it felt cheap, honestly. As in, like, you know, you, again, you think of that, like, visual novel experience. So you're just like, oh, do you want the good ending or do you want the, <laughs> yeah, yeah, or do you want yeah. the actual good ending where we, like, you know, maybe you don't, it's not as gratifying in terms of, like, you don't get everything you want. But in terms of, like, how to write it, it's it's better, you know. Uh, it, it, it's one of those things where, like, it's it kind of sucks, like, because if you're, like, emotionally invested in a character. And, you know, uh, Okazaki... 40 something episodes with the guy and you know he's not a bad he's he's i found him quite a relatable character as i said already yeah uh, a, a part of you a, a kind of like an emotional part of you is like oh yeah just give it to me give me all the ice cream and the candy and the you know <laughs> whatever but another part of you oh, is like no. when you put your sort of like you know your hold on a second you know is all that ice cream and candy actually good for me and <laughs> is, <laughs> is this actively harming what was you know a, a fantastic thing and also like speaking on the magic thing i think it, the, this is like kind of my fantasy nerd side coming out. I think there could have been a better job for uh, foreshadowing the sort of like hospital and the town itself as this sort of right. like magical space. You have that one space. scene with Akio, right? Yeah. You have that one scene with Akio, which is pretty good. It's an emotional one. I think I cried on that one when he's yeah, talking was, about it. It was very touching, it. but that was yeah. the first point. But I feel like if we had a little right. bit, like, you know, right. a few other exactly. instances. Exactly. You know? So I feel like that's I, you've touched on exactly what I wanted to say is that the conceits are not terrible here. That last scene where uh, Tomoya or Tomoya Okazaki is walking on the rose petal, you know, pathway up first first episode thing. They call back to the first episode and he doesn't say hi to uh, Nagisa after she says Anpan. I think that's a that's a good seed in concept. And the idea of multiple timelines, which has been foreshadowed or, you know, branching paths, you can you can do that. You can use that as a device to give the drama and then maybe even do what they do and go back and say, what if Nagisa doesn't die on the thing? And here's your here's your candy and, and uh, happiness. Um but I don't think the execution is there. And if I, if you handed me the script, I would say we're cutting all this robot CGI bullshit. We are not recanting on this drama. We're cutting, we're cutting Ushio's illness and incredibly manipulative and forced death scene in the show. Like, holy shit. How does this girl not go to the hospital after a fever of six months? Like what the fuck? Yeah. I, it blew my mind. Um, and we're, we're really trimming it down, but we're really fleshing out that kind of this is a special place where this hospital is built. And we're really fleshing out that alternative choice that Tomoya, or Tomoya would choose to live with Nagisa even in spite of the thing. You know what it reminded me of? I'm going to reference Paula Magi Madoka Magica because that's my thing. But episode 12 has that exact decision. It has that exact scene for Sayaka. It's like, would you choose to do it all over again if you could? And it's that it's that powerful choice, right? Like, yes, I would. I loved it. I, I for all the goods and the bads and I, I choose to live in that way. And then all of that's lost with all this like absurd symbolism of of the robot of the other world of the lights and it uh, it's all just so muddied and it could be cleaned up to be something really powerful 
Yeah. I and mean, this again, this is an issue where I think in 2022, it actually would be. Because I, yeah. I, I would say a lot of people, <laughs> like, a lot of people, I think there's like a, a sort of like a, a rose tint. Again, I'm going to use this for the third or fourth time today. It's rose tinted spectacle sort of view on please, well, please media in general. Blossom, tinted <laughs> yeah, spectacles. there we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, where you, you sort of like, oh, you kind of like almost forget or you overlook all the flaws or faults of um, an older work and just sort of like decry how you know anime yeah. ain't like it used to be or movies aren't like they used to be when the reality is actually in a lot of respects it's so much more sophisticated now in terms of like i just think of like how good like a, a komi-san is or like a love is war yeah. you know what i mean yeah. and like how, yes. how well yes. they're like constructed you know um and how like fleshed out that or, you know the flesh out that romance is and how like funny and unique and like quirky it is and like how the characters right. really especially like um like nagisa nagisa like there's she's very adorable right and it's like yeah. um but it's not like she's not sophisticatedly written i would say you know in terms oh, of yeah, like so, like yeah. what is her her like uh like what is what is what is it her that makes her her right other than being oh, yeah. adorable and sort of like yeah. you know like a, a shrieking, you know, wilting violet. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Even even the drama club thing of like, uh, or even that main narrative through line or theme of clan ad itself and not after story of I value the times we had together and the journey, you know, everything that happened uh, and Nagisa, you know, finding friends, I guess. It's nowhere near as refined, as powerful or as, you know, good a uh, narrative character arc as it would later be in something like Komi san. Yeah. Yeah. That's just said, you know, it's, life is getting better, boys and girls, even though generally it's getting worse. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and, and this goes back to what we were talking about earlier that, that e for so many people, like it, we grew up alongside the anime industry in a lot of ways. And yeah, maybe you didn't really know how to best adapt a novel, a visual novel like this in 2007. And you were working out the kinks. And uh, yeah, it, it, it's it's so much different. And yeah. I think too, I want to get into my next point here. And, that, and that's that I'm 33 years old, right? And we mentioned we're old, we're old men now. Oh, it's fucks. like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> we're jaded, right? I know life sucks. I've experienced life sucking firsthand. But if this is your first time, if you're in high school watching this and you you don't realize that you're going to graduate from high school, you and yeah, if you want to start a relationship, you're going to have to get a fucking job. And you're going to have to pay for your rent in a small trashy ass apartment. And, and it's like and you're going to regret the, having to wake up every day and, and shuffle off to your thing where you screw in bolts on telephone poles. Part of that's why Okazaki is such a great protagonist or that he that he realizes that that he you know he's very perceptive he's very engaging um but just having that type of content in this show having to deal with you know your your shitbag dad uh, causing you to lose this nice cushy job it it's like having life punch you in the face and it, for a lot of people if that's your first interaction with that as i suspect this was then yeah. yeah, it's gonna hit different, right? It, and I think a lot of people can you can hand wave away a lot of the narrative storytelling issues that Kyoto Animation would certainly definitely fix in their later shows, uh, because it was just the the first time or your first time engaging with it. Yeah, absolutely. It's like a, when you acquire a taste for anything, right? You, as your tastes sophisticate and the industry sort of sophisticates with your tastes, uh, you just expect better. But I wouldn't, yeah. I, I also try not to be like, to hold it against, say, Clannad explicitly, right? The only issue is, is this essential watching in 2022 the same way it was in 2009, we'll say. Now that, oh, you know, right, we can have a debate right. about on sophistication and growth, okay? So from what I remember, June Maeda's next step would have been Angel Beats. So, like, he's on a bit of a heater right now in terms of, like, opinions aside, like, quality aside, right? Like, you're talking about, yeah. in, term, like, in terms of, like, shows that, skip, like, um, set the, like, the bar into, or the benchmark in terms of, like, popular non shown in shows in the 2010s period, the early 2010 period prior to K-On, right? Right, you must be this emotionally manipulative to, yeah. to ride this ride or... or... Yeah. 
Yeah. But, I mean, do you think he got better from here, or do you think this is a career high point in terms of like? If you're talking about drama as a whole in anime, this is not the end all or the genesis of drama in by, anime. By no you know? means. <laughs> like, no like, come on, right? Like I, I watched Ashtono Joe, right, and that that is amazing, and it, it's some great drama. Or, you know, Rosa Versailles. Or, yeah, there's plenty. There's a thousand examples you could you could bring up. We're really specifically talking about, I guess, Kyoto Animation because it's the podcast. Um, and the anime that Kyoto Animation helped create. And I say anime there, I say anime culture that Kyoto Animation helped create in because so much, so much of everything is defined by the Haruhis and the Kaons and, and the Clanads, um, even outside of Kyoto Animation. Mm -hmm. So I I will leave it that I don't know that Jun Maeda gets <laughs> gets any better. I think that Angel Beats is is manipulative in very much the same way. I think yeah. that Ed is. I would say the it, only it, thing about it, uh, yeah. the pairing it down to twelve episodes, I think, is a big plus. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Is yeah. It, as I said, like this, like original clan ad, not after story. After story, I could be convinced needs to be twenty five episodes. I could be convinced, but the original run would be would <laughs> okay. it's twelve. Like I, like I'm saying, I'm not saying I, I believe that, but I'm saying I'm more There's willing to accept least, that yeah, than I, yeah. with clan ad is like it's twelve. And with Angel Beats, just for the nature of it. Now, there is the issue where it's sort of superficial, uh, where you just don't have the time to really give it, you know. A, a and I think Angel Beats suffers from that. Yeah, yeah. it does. Yeah. The funny thing is, I feel like he's developing to a point where there's something's going to come, where it's going to hit. Like, you think of like Air Cannon, Clan Ad, and you're like, okay, he's working towards something here. Angel Beats, okay, he's still working towards it. But then he hits Charlotte, I think, after that, which is like an active step backwards, in my opinion. Again, people like it though. I think people still had the Kool Aid thing, where it's yeah. just like if he wrote it, it has to be good, right? And then we have like think, the day, and then kind of yeah. was it the day I became a god? I think it was his sort of death. Now I think it was his sort of like M Night Shyamalan moment where people were wait a minute, is he actually good? <laughs> See, know? that's where I hop off. That's I, I don't follow that far. But yeah, no, I there's there's so many ways you could look at this, and and I think that I mean. I think that the successes that Kyoto Animation had in this period, uh, and and then moving on to um, building up all these talent that we talked about earlier and, and, and making a, a name for themselves and, and financially too, writing off the success of Haruhi and, and Clan Ad and, and shows of the like, uh, really, really formed a lot for the studio too. I, I saw, I mentioned I saw <laughs> Kaon in, in Clan Ad After Story. And I, and I think I think there's a lot of it there. Uh, but I also think that there's a lot of, there's a lot of learning from your mistakes, right? My favorite movie of all time, which we will not be doing an episode on is the disappearance of Haruhi Suzumiya. And I think that you learn a lot of subtlety when you create clan ad, <laughs> which, which sounds like really, really dumb or really pithy. Um, but yeah, you do. I, I think you can't first, you can't make Yuki Nagato without first making Nagisa. And I'll leave that statement at that for everything that you want to look into and dig into about it. Yeah, I was kind of like wondering, like, so I, and in terms of like a companion piece, I think as odd as it is, as it is, is to say, I don't think it's a canon air thing because I think that's more of the same. But if I like, if I pair this with like um, the melancholy, not the disappearance of Haruhi Suzumiya, and then I, I think of like these two as sort of like foundational texts in what would become sort of like the tree of Kyoto animation, because right. I think there's like a stem where it's like a lot. You can see a lot of Haruhi in like a certain uh, aspect of Kyoto animation, or what would go on to like their kind of like works and the best parts of the work. But I think there's also like there's been a lot of moaning, not moaning, but like decrying some of the flaws. But they did a lot right especially in terms of like influence right in that in that respect like, i have to like laud clan ad right because i think there's a lot of like what i love in other shows there's like a through line to clan ad right if if we'll say if haruhi is like the the father of kyoto animation i think right. this like kind of could be the mother right um, yeah yeah that's fair i think that's totally fair um in in terms of success in terms of you know uh reception publicly yeah totally um i i also think that so much of Clan Ed, as we've touched on, feels different in 2022 than it did in 2007, whereas I can absolutely go back and watch 
the melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya and have and still enjoy it in the same way. So I, I wonder how much it's it's hurt by the stuff that that we brought up earlier in in that type of enduring legacy. Yeah, it's like it's one of those things where like certain things are just kind of like you have to kind of watch it through the context of this is sort of like a foundational text in like my anime yeah. fandom, right? Because yeah. everybody has that shit, right? Like there's, uh, you said you had only got to it this year, right? And and that, that yeah. might not be like a, where, you know, this thing where like I'm sort of a building an identity as the guy who didn't watch Clanad, right? Just that everyone has those shows, those like blind spots. You know, I never got to watch um, Utena, for example, right? It's yeah. like, one. Well, I, I literally, that's, that's true. I've never <laughs> got to watch Utena. I was like, I've never seen it. And I know I'd like it because I'm pretty certain it's Kimuhiko Ukahara. And yes. I, you know, yes. so it's like, it's, I it's know fair. it's something I'm going to like. It's just like one of those things where it's like one day it will get to it. Right. And, um, and here's the thing too, is that like, this is, this, this came up on, on Reddit, our anime though, in my daily life, the people that I interact with on a daily basis, literally every single one of them has watched revolutionary girl. Udna. Like that, it wouldn't even be a question. I, uh, you know, I, and I, again, if you want to go on Clear and Sweet uh, on YouTube and check out my adolescence of Utna breakdown, shop by shop breakdown, like, like I'm into the Utna fandom, but it's just such a text that everybody's seen it, and I think that reflects back on Clanad too in this weird way. Like everybody, when you were coming into the thing in 2008, everybody, even the action fans, even the shonen fans, you could refer to. Fuko starfish and people would get it yeah right and and it was such this cultural touchstone and i think horror he was too um and and now i you know people are out there watching demon slayer and attack on titan and whatever the hell else you know and and there there was this our anime poll of like which shows have you seen and and it's all the romance and it's all the drama and it's all the magical girl shows all the shows that i'm all all about and have my confirmation biases and my little clicks about, you know, those are like 10% of people maybe yeah. in the general anime watching populace have seen this. Well, that, you know? That's that's the, this is another thing, right? There's like a, I would say more so than almost any other genre of like any sub, like subcultural genre, which, you know, anime would fall into, or at least Western anime fans would fall into uh, this. There's like the cyclical, like turnaround of like the, um, the population will say so like if you and if you want to see like a perfect example of this is just all you gotta do is look at mal and look at the top shows of mal and how sort of like static they've been like full yeah. Metal alchemist has been at the top um for god knows how long in terms we'll say audience numbers right it's just because the fact of the matter is there was a generation of people who came up with that um the same generation who, who came up with clan ads so and then right. sort of a lot of them would have cycled out right and have been replaced by like um a new generation of people who have kind of come in post we'll say the i don't want to say like the one one punch man boom of like 2014 2015 where i feel like no. it just exploded in terms of like there's you like can, it's you a can use community. the word you can say fucking zoomers you that's okay that's not a slur <laughs> no i i i my, my, my number one thing is i always hate the idea of being a gatekeeper you know like, i don't want <laughs> okay, i don't want to be that gotcha. guy right sure, like, sure, i don't sure, want sure, to be sure. that because i like i've had experiences coming into like communities and sort of uh not Okay, sorry about that, everybody. We had a bit of a uh, recording issue. Uh, yeah, but uh, we're good now. And Yada, you were talking in to the people about gatekeeping. So wh what's your passion about gatekeeping? Uh, I hate it, honestly. And uh, <laughs> I just shared this. I'll share it again because it's just, just the kind of person that I was when I was younger. I legitimately dated the girl who unironically would say that she listened like she liked the band before they got famous and didn't like them anymore <laughs> and like this would happen a lot and you know in her credit she had great musical taste but i didn't like that and it, it really like kind of stuck a crawl in my throat and luckily you know for me when i came into the anime community i never experienced it i guess i'm so hellfire oh. awesome i guess or maybe i was just like so inoffensive with my like lukewarm <laughs> takes that i never really like <laughs> got the ire of like the fucking legend of the galactic hero fanboys who are gonna like decry like oh what what do you mean you haven't seen uh, yeah you didn't pick the right fights you didn't insult the right zeros. people then yeah. <laughs> yeah but uh and i yeah, having watching it coming you know later on people like moaning and decrying like gatekeepers and then coming into other fandoms you know like uh, magic the gathering for example right just a toxic toxic fandom all the bad shit you hear about like gatekeeping and I wouldn't want to do that. I wouldn't want to decry new anime fans or whatever, like for not having seen these foundational texts. 
Yeah, you see, this the break is now. I actually don't yeah. know what the point was about this gatekeeping we're, thing. We were like oh, all the Zoomers that don't that don't know about the, uh, yeah. the old they shows, don't know about the, the classics, old shit. the classics yeah. like Planet After Story. Yeah, well, here's the and, thing though. Right? I was I was thinking about this prior to like uh, our internet exploding. So I, I find that each year there's sort of a show that defines the year in anime. And anime is such a weird thing where like there's a really like you can see it like let's all move over there, right? I, if I think of like 2012, it was just a year that was like defined by Sword Art Online and like how <laughs> big that show was. And, yeah. you know, like Attack on Titan, I think it was 2011 and uh, One Punch Man, Tokyo Ghoul. They just sort of like defined that year. Now, 2007 is a really interesting year because Planet came out, obviously. I think of that as like a defining the year and defining anime taste in general worthy show but there's also i think death note came out that year as well and okay <laughs> i think maybe like spice and wolf 2007 is a yeah, really interesting yeah. year but these would all be shows that people would hold up and gatekeep with is what you're saying yeah I, it's like there it's a it's a quite interesting year in terms of like I think you could build sort of like a foundation of anime fandom just on the strength of like yeah, and, 2007 alone which is a that may like a it may all like largely coincide with uh the uh, rise in streaming or being able to torrent files or uh, you know some type of like broadband internet access being prevalent enough that people having enough computers that are able to do it that yeah, like, you know or social media you know because yeah. uh, looking at this list is like you also have like higurashi come into 2007 bakano uh sayonara zetsubu sensei school days which is a oh, another one all the zoomer kids need to watch <laughs> well, another light novel adaptation, right? Yeah. Oh, um, Jesus, Gurren Lagann was this year as well. It's like, go. yeah, big year, 2007. Anime so was we, born in 2007. Apparently, yeah. Like, forget about that fucking, like, you know, My Neighbor Totoro or Akira or, you know, Cowboy Bebop <laughs> or whatever, you know, whatever was B, BC in terms of before Clanad. It just, it, it seems to matter. Yeah, so so Clanad as the first romance show and as the first visual novel adaptation and as the first drama show ever to be animated. Yeah, it's literally just, it's I, literally just the it's first a good, anime. It's a good first attempt. And I think that that kind of is where I'm at with Clanad as a whole. It's like, this is what I thought it was, which is really weird going into it because, it, you know, there's this reputation that we've we've talked a lot about. But it, it really is just a visual novel adaptation. And then this immense really effective drama in the the kind of the second third of after story uh, and yeah it it as if you take it as that if you look at it as we said through the context of its time uh or just go in expecting that i think you come out of it appreciating it for what it is uh yeah, it, that you could say that about every show, though. I suppose it, you know. Yeah, I but like I it for I people, like it for what it is. But no, I think no, a because, lot of people don't do that though. Like a lot of people are like, "There's no fight scenes in this show. Why are there no fight scenes?" And I'm like, "It's a, it's about four girls going to fucking Antarctica, and it's a character drama. Why, you know, like ah, not not you know, you you're you're putting some expectations that the show is not deliberately not about onto it. So why?" It, so if you meet the show where it's at, if you meet the show, if you go in knowing a little bit of melodrama, yeah. if you go in knowing the 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 circumstances of Kyoto Animation, if you go in knowing um, I, that the ending there's a lot of crying, that it's emotionally manipulative, and that the ending's a little bit whack, I think you, I think you'll enjoy it. I think yeah. you'll I think you'll find something to like. Yeah, it's so like it's such a soft introduction. It's so like sort of gentle. Like you're sort of the waters are generally quite tranquil. I think when it comes to a lot of the hiccups, you know, you're you're sort of so just like just so relaxed and so chill with it that you know, I think you're you, generally you're going to be forgiving, and that's why I don't think like if I was grading it, we'll say because I I had this idea of like as we go through these shows, sort of like rank this Kiyoani big boards, you know, where you're mm -hmm. sort of like where does this stack up? Oh, and, oh a I'm, tier list is what you said. Yeah, a tier yeah. list. Everyone, <laughs> everyone knows a good tier list. So like I think this is like a it's not a tier. Or S tier, yeah. depending on like how you're how you're making your tier, but right, right. right. I, I I don't think it's, I don't it, I don't want to be a C for Clan Ad either because just because you know oh no oh no it's it, there's too much good here to deny you 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 cannot say that there's nothing valuable in Clan Ed and especially Clan Ed After Story, uh in you know whether that's historic or contextual or or even just a straight up romance drama, there's too much here, so yeah I would I would actually agree with you I would put it solidly be 
I think there's an argument for after story being in the A tier. Yeah, I think if you're taking like the wider sphere of things, like oh, um, it's not just the quality of it; it's like the um, the, the cultural significance, the um, the general, you know, just the the, the, the other things that come with yeah. like uh, re- regarding an anime. Because that's I think a lot of these older older properties, like you have to sort of like if you're not going to grade it specifically with these things in mind, you have to acknowledge that they exist. And even though it's like I would say it's a B show. Uh, B plus maybe for a kind of after story A minus yeah, in that sort yeah. of ballpark. Like yeah. the cultural relevance of it would like in terms of like do you need to watch this? I would say like if you want to be like a I just if you want to be like a sort of informed anime fan. I know there's a lot yeah. to watch as well, but this does feel like I would put this on like a a list of a hundred anime that you need to watch. Right. Yes, exactly, exactly. Uh, and and uh, you know for for us being fans of Kyoto Animation. Uh, for doing a podcast on Kyoto animation or for me indeed being a fan of romances and drama too, that uh, yeah, it, it feels not necessary, but certainly something that you should definitely get around to. And I I think you, you'll find a lot there, whether it's to like, uh, who knows, but it's a lot there that is interesting. This was not hard to come up with a lot of things to say about Clan Ad After Story if for a podcast. Oh, absolutely. And I think that anybody that watches it is going to have that. And it's going to tell you a lot about yourself, where you add at life. Um, it's very it's going to cause you to be very reflective uh, in just the content that it that it talks about. There's no way around that. That's actually and very with After Story specifically. It's quite interesting in terms of like how what, what Kiane Kiane would go on to produce later on. And if you think of this like, you know, following Haruhi, where it's like the original planet is like it's a certain time and space and it's sort of like a high school clubby kind of like thing yeah. that Kyoto animation would sort of like really just like for a period of time, we'll say like for the next prior to this, the next seven years, they're just yeah. gonna like define this sort of like after school um sort of like slice of life comedy but like heartfelt comedy in various yeah. shapes and sizes like with a twist right so like in the case of like you know um K-On, it's K-On, like you're drinking tea yeah. and playing guitars uh and again kidding. it's it's kind of the more i think about it, it's mad that we're not doing K-On, but we're not yeah yeah, um, yeah. what you're saying is K-On is basically nichi joe and that's basically you know hyoka and that's basically lucky you know, star chinibio you know, <laughs> even yeah, even yeah. serenifonium which is like you know, yeah. it's kind of on the late period of that, but it's still sort of of that sort of ilk. Um, after story sort of stands alone in this respect that we have this like life after high school sort of portion of it. And it's just like, th- like that's the most affecting, that's the most memorable part of it. And it's, it's kind of fascinating, I guess, like in retrospect that they never really went that way again. Um, right. And it's a, it's a big like what if moment, like what would have, like what would have the next 10 years have been like if they had of, you know, focused on, some you know on this kind of like after story sort of world we'll say as opposed to the um the high school club route that yeah they did, you, know? you just you just want a hard straight up drama uh from kyoto animation yeah i think because Which... i think we got like an element of it with violet evergarden but yeah i was about to say isn't that violet evergarden <laughs> but the only thing with violet evergarden is well one it's like it's it's essentially episodic right yes and if yes. i think of like um and, and also it is a fantasy like um yeah yeah you know, sure you kind of wonder if like a straight up like i, I, I the thing about it is there's not that many examples of this right where you have yeah, like, sort of, like yeah. growing up sort of like slice but there are like some of my all-time favorite like slice of life anime which is like by proxy my favorite anime is like barakamon for example right you know right. Um, bring that one up. Yeah. it's like this is an adult you know in a kind of like i could see like kyo animation making a sort of like, their own sort of barakamon like a, it, it kind of yeah. takes a lot of the boxes right Kinema Citrus killed it, but you know, like that kind of show, they've, it's weird to me. Like they've never actually had that moment yet. Maybe they will in yeah. the future, because like there's definitely a like a shift in terms of like what they're delivering recently. Um, oh, totally, and yeah. and I think that's we're talking about them learning themselves and what they were good at, and yeah, that after school comfy slice of life uh, with some humor in there. Um, certainly, that is what they identified, but. I've always been in the realm of their best is when they're doing the character drama, whether that's in the context of the high school or, or otherwise, or whatever it is, um, which is kind of why Violet Evergarden was so 
underwhelming for a lot of stuff you know yeah that's a um, weird show uh in terms yeah, of like yeah, I, I had a i had a friend yeah. who's um big anime fan fellow anime podcaster at once upon a time retired now but he um he was in the military and in ireland like nobody's in the military like that's not a thing <laughs> right, you know what i mean right, yeah. like we have like a dinghy that sort of like circles around the island and looks out for like the british are coming but we're <laughs> yeah. ultimately relying on the british at the same time for like any sort of security issues if god forbid anything right, happened right. but um in the in like in the u.s like you guys were like oh he was in the military for a while or if he was in whatever and he was talking yeah. about like um vita evergarden from like a veteran's perspective oh that's and uh yeah and it was very interesting and he, he talked about this whole like thesis on like uh her eyes and again like jesus christ the animation like in uh violet evergarden is ridiculous oh, right and specifically oh, like the uh like like in terms of like character acting it's like very like it's really well done and it was it, it gave me like a very like interesting sort of like perspective on violet evergarden but it's one of those things where after having that and having this new appreciation for it, i came to the point where it was like oh you know what this is this is like a schindler's list or apocalypto or one of those movies that you know is great and you really enjoyed it that one time you watched it but god you're never going back to do it again <laughs> yeah the you know great I mean? little fireflies yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like yeah, yeah. I, I actually i have a lot of issues <laughs> that's, actually this is my own <laughs> okay, that's, that's I, I, I have it's only the there's only like guess. i only have three 10 out of 10 animes uh ever in my whole oh, anime wow. world. and it's like uh two two of them are my miyazaki movies uh my number total is 10 out of 10 Spirit Away is 10 out of 10, and Show Again Roku is 10 out of 10. And it fucking I'm drives me nuts that people are like, Grave of the Fireflies is better than Totoro. It's absolutely not. I'm it's, not on this podcast. About, um, <laughs> or there will no be episode two. I'm sorry. I, you're, talking about, you're, talking about, you're talking about emotional manipulation? <laughs> Totoro? <laughs> That's where you're going, Totoro? I, I, I'm, tell, no, I'm telling you, dude, like, it's, it's, it's a 90-minute movie. It's clean as hell. It tells a fantastic coming-of-age story. I, oh, dude, I could go on... It's not the Totoro cast, but I'm telling you, because a lot of people, a lot of people confuse. This is like my 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 tagline for why slice of life is great. Great stories don't need to be about great things, and people confuse. Like a lot of people are, a lot of people are all like, "Oh, it's Princess Mononoke, it's Grave of the Fireflies." Yes, because it's obviously a big, sweeping, grand story where you have something that's inherently more intimate in Totoro. You know, it's a, about a girl transitioning to adulthood and. You know, she has these moments where, oh, dude, it kills me every time when she has the moment where she sort of breaks down and becomes a child again, when she's talking to her, her granny or granny, but not her granny, uh, the character granny about like her mom not getting well again. And it's just like, Jesus Christ, this is fucking incredible writing. But again, people are like, oh, Tudor <laughs> or Spirit of the Way. Spirit of the Way kind of moves more towards a grander sort of storytelling, but it's like this is such a niche, well-written story, and this is why Slice of Life. Fuck it, I'm so, on the soapbox. So this is why I, I, Slice of Life I, I, is the I best fucking genre. I was gonna bring it back to Ed. I was gonna bring it back to Clyde Ed as soon as you're done. But I agree with you. I agree with you. Go off. Go off. Yeah. This is again. It's this whole thing. It's like great stories not come don't need to be about great things because ultimately we are not great things. We are creatures. We are like we are little humans, and having really human moments is deeply fucking effective. And that's why like a lot of the moments that like kill me in the show. Is this Akio being a father? Yes. And, and, yes. You know, and this is you yes. know, this is why I think Totoro is perfect, because it just tells that story in a way that's not like contrived or cheap. Like, unfortunately, there are parts in Planet that are, but you know, when it's good, it's sort of like toes align with like my favorite stuff of this kind of genre. You know, like uh, like I'm thinking like you know, like Hakushi Goto, Barakamon, these fucking these shows that just like, oh you. my god, you I know, this you. is just like this is like a nice treatise or, you know, on the human condition. And that's what yes. I'm here for. Yes. And that's why yes. fucking anime rocks. Because wow. unfortunately in the West, we just don't, I don't think we get these like, uh, just disarmingly kind of like low key kind of character driven stories the same way. It yes. has to be about yes. something. And yes. again, I just, I just, yes. it's, it's a bit of a bugbear of mine where people need, like, you need to have this grand thing. Like Grave of the Fireflies is more impactful because it's in World War II, you know, like, yeah. okay, like whatever, that's your take on it, you know? But uh, I, I'm happy to watch somebody fucking, you know, cleaning a floor, you know, yeah. if, <laughs> yeah. if, if, if it moves me, you know. And, uh, yes, exactly. Yeah. Can so. I, I'm, I'm bringing it back here because I agree with everything you said on that rant, with the complete exception of my neighbor Totoro. 
I do not agree with that reading of that film. That is not for this cast. That is for the Totoro cast. That is do not invite me on the Totoro cast. I think that movie sucks. Oh my uh, god, dude. But dude, 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 that's, a, that's the holy trinity of Ted. Although you don't like Shogun <laughs> Roku either, right? Uh, no, I do not. I do <laughs> not at all like that show. Uh, but I will say, I will say that your description of the everyday, your description of the small moments, that is exactly where the strength of Clan Ad lies. That is exactly what I loved about watching this. And I think it is totally underrated as a content or, you know, in this genre that is that it's it can be so fantastical at times because you can animate anything that you want. Uh, all of my favorite shows in that way. I, I have many 10 out of 10s. I have probably 30 10 out of 10s. Uh, and I think that all of those there share that element of this is just a tiny character moment that is either. Uh, not related to the fantasy in the story or it's completely completely beholden to the fantasy in the story or or not related to it it's just the character moment just the character's feelings um something like alice's graduation in aria the origination which is one of the f- most famous things or if we're throwing out examples i already used a place further than the universe and, and I, sound you, did, the I sky. Caught that. I caught you know that and, and the those are the same type of thing of like this just is a moment where we can be people together and there's no there's no external stuff when 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 okazaki goes and asks the the other guy for the job like that was that hit me in a way that i didn't you know or when it when he when he washed his dad's back and trying to trying to help him and like that that stuff got to me yeah in a way that the fantasy didn't but that's what so Kind of just when you, when you mentioned um, a face a place for the universe, I kind of got my mind thinking of this because again, that's like a tier. That's a, that is an S tier anime, anime for me as well. I think it, I I had it second for like number two for anime of the year that year. I think it was twenty eighteen when it came out. I, I had Euro Camp ahead of it just to be kind oh, of like, just to be like quirky, oh, just to be quirky. Oh, uh, it was it was the thing where I had to fill out a form. Like it was like a like yeah, oh yeah, yeah. what and I oh, could see I, I, a lot. I knew I had a feeling that you know place for the universe was going to get was going to win. But I wanted like well, if I nominate Eurocamp as like best of the year, it will make the category. So that's why I chose it. I think like I probably you do say the, that our anime voting. No, this or... was for the Anime Addicts Anonymous, the AAA AAA Anime Podcast. It was <laughs> okay, so it was okay, like okay. a bunch of like OG anime podcasters. They had yeah, to think about the anime Oscars every year. And uh, I did it for Reddit one year. Yeah. Yeah, so, and I I, I also I, I would live and die in the uh, cute girls doing cute girl things hill. <laughs> I okay. love that genre. It, it, you know, it, I don't know why. Reminder, we are not talking about K-On in this show. Yeah, yeah this, it's, it's madness. Podcast. But I was so the question that came into my mind when you started talking about a place for the universe. I think okay, if you're building your anime fandom out from this point of clan ads, would you have like five recommendations that you think okay, these are kind of like touchstone things that I would say mm. like if you like this because this is a classic like if you think of like a mal page or a any list yeah. page where it's sort of like. Yeah. users also enjoyed x right and then yeah. you mentioned a place for a universe i think that falls right into it it's not a romance yes. or at least it's not explicitly a romance then maybe you could sort of like ship you know she she was say and um the, the penguins name? yeah we do yeah, yeah the penguins there you go all right yeah and but, you know, a great villain. yeah but it has, like, it has <laughs> and in terms of like a personal journey a personal yes, journey and, like, you know, right. yeah right like, yeah but because like, kind of, it's kind of this weird like diverse kind of kind of cocktail okay. of like different so, things you know let me tell let me take your idea and run with it then so for romance the one that i would recommend is uh my anime of the year back in whatever that was uh as the moon so beautiful oh it tsuki gakire yes gakire. Yep, I, have, I gotta nothing. i gotta i gotta talk about that first just really quickly because we're never going to talk about this again it, dude. It's my, my favorite shows. scene in tsuki gakire is when um because i've had this like talking about human moments and relatable moments and like yeah, yeah this is the yeah. fucking sauce right here when he was uh, at the, he was at a restaurant, I think, with his family, and the Episode girl came two. In, and he ordered the coffee because he wanted to look sort of cool. And he I just have like, a. Oh. I have an old video on my channel talking about episode two of As the Moon So Beautiful and this exact scene that you Dude, have brought up it here. Was, it was incredibly – as like you know, yeah. a guy who went through awkward teenage years. Now, obviously, yeah. all boys Catholic school, but I was aware of the existence of females <laughs> right. uh, or the opposite sex. Like, and um, trying to like – I that, that moment was so painfully relatable in the cringiest way possible because exactly. I knew I would do the exact same thing. And that – I remember like exactly. – we had just started doing the podcast at that point. So I hadn't, 
I hadn't even made my first YouTube video yet at this point. And I remember like just eulogizing on how that scene was so fucking like, it was like, uh, distilled uh, yeah. teenage dumb yeah, yeah. There's, a, yeah. there's a lot of like certain moments that like i think what's the uh, the uh in yu yu haka show the togaro moment when he doesn't get coffee he gets orange juice or something like that because it's an off sighted moment right or like uh okay. when um Chi, uh, Chi, uh, chihiro in spirit away kicks on her shoes and they're like there's these like iconic moments of like <laughs> right, you know right. it's like these are very specific moments that are like painfully relatable and painfully detailed and yeah. it's all about like ma and like it's it's something specific they're nothing Japanese. special right yeah. you know or, 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 or mano no awade yeah is that, that, is that yeah. the term is uh, yeah and you're just simple... like but what that is what that moment there is that's why i think high school works because everyone's been through adolescence right, right? like you know everyone's been an old person right so it's not gonna be right, hard to like right maybe not everyone's going to you know enjoy like inu yashiki or not inu yashiki because of not, you know yeah uh but it's like everyone's been a teenager and everyone can have that moment where like oh my god they captured this so well and exactly Suke Gakire was that so complete diatribe people randomness at all but oh uh, no that's I totally love that, related i love to that everything. choice i love that choice if that is okay. a choice right yeah, <laughs> like that's yeah, so that was one of the five said. I would I would totally okay. recommend because yeah that that's that's exactly what we're talking about right the strength of the show is the relatability is the uh, everyday aspect of it um, when you get away from the visual novel and you just get into these these people that are these falling in love and what that is what that isn't some of my favorite stories are about that for the drama aspect of something like that there could be a ton of things but. I think a place for them in the universe would be the one that I would I would go to as like you want to cry right and you want it to be grounded right you don't want to be hand waved away by this uh, Mario Kata magic tree at the end or whatever the it was uh, what the fuck was going on yeah 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 or or any of the ending of this one if you want like the solid ending if you want a drama that has an arc that has characters that all interact together. And then it comes to a narrative, thematic, powerful conclusion that makes sense and is not invalidated later on by the the, the whims of a of the robot and the lights. <laughs> then, uh, yeah, a place for the universe is a place to look. And uh, shout outs to Crunchyroll for sitting on the distribution rights and the dubbing rights to that and never releasing a blue Blu-ray disc or dub. So. All right, that, they are soon. They're so, as we say, soon to be our dark overlords, so Crunchyroll. I, I miss, <laughs> yeah. If they sign the check, then whatever. I'll take. We'll cut this part out of the podcast. But until so, then, fuck so though I just had a quick look at the on the mal page and like the number one uh, sort of like comparison, and it's interesting because the more I think about it, the more I'm like, of course, it's that you're like in April. Uh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. If we're talking about death, <laughs> if you if you want to talk about death. Well, a place for the universe has that too, but yeah, this uh, it, it's a lot. It, 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 there's a lot of touchstones, though, in terms of like you know, you're talking about like this uh, fractious relationship with an uh, with a parents parental figure. This uh, idea yeah. of like kind of post kind of like trauma and obviously the death of a loved one, right? Like that's yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, I, I, I'm gonna say it. I think your like in April, like I know was like infinitely better than um than glad oh, yeah. our, like jesus oh. christ that the braveness of i'm going to talk about this again when, when we get to san euphonium or actually yeah season, season one it has it but the braveness of just having like an 11 minute piano fucking rehearsal and not yeah, needing to yeah. just like in you know uh muddy it with fucking like flashbacks of talking or like you know just like just with flaff and fluff and you know like bunch of like oh, totally, totally. you know, just like that's like that's a very like i that's my big moment about uh semi phony like wow they just had the whole performance and yeah it's like, no, yeah. It like <laughs> no bullshit no nothing it's just like they just animate the fuck out of this high school band playing and that's really like admirable because and that's the thing that always baffles me it's like how they got away with the end of state <laughs> like <it's> <laughs> <laughs> Right. Yes, exactly, exactly. And I think I, to, to go back to what we were talking about, the context of this show, I think if you, if Haruhi didn't hit as big as it would, or if Clanad hadn't been so successful too, because this really was a, a you know financially and and reputation wise a very successful show, um, then I don't think you would uh, I don't think you would have something like that, or even an endless eight, uh, or they would be much more conservative. Uh, yeah when we get to munto i one of the questions i always think about is like 
what if Munto was the big thing that hit? Like, what if, what if that alternate timeline thing that we're talking about with Clanad? What if that happened and we and we time jumped over to the timeline where where Munto is- hit? Yeah, that's like what? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's always like the big sliding door moments, right? I say one of those things is like, what if um if it wasn't Sword Art Online, it was um from the new worlds right because they're both a1. oh yeah, Shin they're, both, uh, yeah. yeah they're both a1 pictures they both come out the same year yeah. and it's like they're both kind of like these big ambitious project projects and they're both you know theoretically like obviously one is when you watch them it's like very unlikely that <laughs> shinzaka yori was ever going to be this like f- oh, breakout yeah. phenomenon because of yeah, just the, totally, totally. the nature of the subject matter but it is a kind of a bit of slightly norm moment where like what if you know sort of nine just sort of it came and went we'll say like in a manner that like darling and the franks did right like came in with a lot of hype yep, but just exactly, never really like affected exactly. the landscape the same way that um it did because oh. like and i oh man it would be a much better place to, for us yeah. all to live in. Hey, I, you... I remember like watching uh sword art line and go, like i like einkrads to this day i'll say einkrads are pretty decent and then it just the, like it's like what is everyone complaining about and the fucking cratering in the second half was like it was like the comet in your name it was like <laughs> it was like extraterrestrial like it was incredible you know. uh, uh, <laughs> uh, i will say that maybe can we can we put is there any way that we can relate clan at after story to uh, from a new world and put that as one of our our recommendations for this well, show? i would say this right um that's that's just a, a generally that's another top 100 show that people need to watch uh yeah. like, like, you know it's yeah. interesting there is a pretty like interesting like uh cast of young teenage characters especially in the beginning right so like you come with this like coming of age and they transition to into adulthood as well right which is very rare like yeah. how many shows do you think of oh the teen we actually get the time skip when we get them as adults and it's like it's not just like a, a couple of scenes at the end like a lot of the story of after story is adults tomoya and adult nigasa yeah. and, yeah. and you, in i guess in your from the new world as well you know you have that time so, skip and so maybe I w- like it's I tenuous would also, but um yeah no i would doable. also throw out another one here i would also throw out the the use of fantasy in that show because i'm i'm always famous for uh burning shinsekai yori at the stake for its use of the exposition donkey oh my god i think yeah. you remember the exposition three, donkey right? Yeah, right, so no, no, it was, it's been so long now. But yeah, there's just like the plot of Shinteki Yori with the psychic powers and all that. It, it, it's it's all just like, I don't know. It feels so unnecessary to a degree. I mean, you needed to to create the the climax or the um the whole bit with Squealer and everything. But you don't, it's not about the world. It's not about the powers. I guess it is kind of about the world it's a lot of world building in shinseki Aori. but uh you know plot being beholden to character drama i think is the lesson to take away from clan at after story and it's something you can tr- tie into that as well yeah absolutely and also like yeah that like geez that exposition episode that's like my biggest like faux pas with that series like and it's so early oh, on yeah. that it's very hard to like r- turn around to somebody and go like you need to watch this show because <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, yeah i know there's this massive red flag in the beginning and like where you're gonna sit there and like just boop, 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 boop. Uh, we I am a I am a donkey library and then yeah, just, yeah, 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 yeah. it's a big moment there you're like I'm either here for this or I'm not right yeah. it's like, I, I think I think that's the same as Clan Ed after story too I think that's the same as like if you can't deal with the uh, what's his friend blonde friend being oh, kicked Sugahara, yeah Sugahara being kicked then boy it's gonna be i i don't know if i can convince you to sit around to see this guy reconcile with his you know his father who who tried hard but was yeah. not a good father i find, like, i actually i will say this like because <laughs> you have just recently finished it so you haven't really kind of encountered the situation yet and i'm guessing that you might not be super quick to recommend it but there was a period in my life where i would be recommending as like oh if you want to watch slice of life anime you have to watch planet right now uh, things are different right there i think it might crack the top 10 but at that time, it was always this like caveat that it's like um, what Black Clover fans have to go through or One Piece fans have to go through. It's like, oh no, but if you stick with it, it's going to be really <laughs> worth it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah I, you do you have I, to get through Clanad for After Story, otherwise. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. It really is like that, and and I think you, I don't know. That's kind of what kept me from watching it for so long, or I, I, I don't know. Maybe there's nothing, uh, nothing intrinsically appealing about Clanad. 
uh, aside from the fact that it, it's going to make you cry in the later half of Clannad After Story. <sighs> yeah. I don't know. I don't know if that's enough selling anymore. And to your point, yeah, I think there are better slice of lives that have come out and filled that void now that you don't have to recommend that. Yeah. I, I throw out a couple of really ones really quickly. I uh, I think Flying Witch kind of just like oh, as yeah, a kind yeah, of like sure. a low stakes kind of like fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I think that for me, that was like a, what the original kind of like chunk of plan I did where it's sort of like, oh, it's all kind of like yeah, there are yeah. sort of stories, but they're just sort of like in, kind of relatively inconsequential. And you just you're sort of here for the vibe and the mood and the characters. And I think fl- like Flying Witch. Yeah. Uh, is that, I guess what do they call it Inuyashiki is that what is it? like this kind of like, yeah, 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 yeah this sort of like that's a, I already soothing R, kind yeah. of yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that, it, this kind of like fits a sort of like a, a low stakes kind of like l- soft fantasy uh, like, I, do you uh, think anime. there are people who are here for that do you think there are people who are like I'm not here for the crying bit and the drama I'm here for the clan ad ass part of clan ad yeah, I, don't, I don't think anybody is like that. Maybe I think I think I think a lot of people. I don't know because like, if, I think like myself generally, I'm like one of these people who generally like would could be there for a mood or a vibe. But yeah. with Clan Ad, it's just like it's not as what like if I think of that comparing like comparing to like a again Komi San or um, yeah. one of the newer shows. Like, but it doesn't, it doesn't have the vibe the same way, right? Or, uh, or maybe the, back in the, the day humor. though. Yeah, uh, yeah, the and, humor, even the humor. Yeah, like I think I would say like I would watch Junibio. 10 times out of 10 over like, okay uh, if i wanted we'll, humor we'll get let's to say that that, one. Let's say that, that was that. on the list yeah. Woo. uh but yeah no, I, I would say there's a lot oh, of that's by of... the way that's seven there's oh one is more. that seven there's <laughs> one more what is it i don't oh i know i remember which one it is <laughs> that one we'd uh... never speak of this show actually let's not yeah. speak of the seventh yeah. or the eighth show i was i was recounting to a friend last night it was like i just kind of re- broached the topic and he's like oh I, can i can I? he wanted to come on and do it and he's like can i do clan ad i was like no you can't do clan ad actually because clan ad's already taken care of but, but you, I was like what you can do i was like what you can do and he's like well what else are you doing i was like we're, we're doing monto and he could not get his mind around the fact that we were doing Monto. Like, well, <laughs> that like, anybody wanted to talk about Monto? Because <laughs> it was like, first I had to explain to him what Monto was. And he's like, wait, so you're doing Monto, but you're not doing Violet Evergarden. And you're not, yeah. doing, <laughs> and you're not doing Miss Kobayashi Dragon Maid, but you're doing Monto. We fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> I, I i said it to him i was like you have to, to you have to think of this in terms of like if there's a future in the future and you need to pull an episode out of the bag and you've used all the good shit and then you're left with monto but if you <laughs> eat, but, but if you if you eat your monto early then you can have your violet evergarden or you can have your k on or you can have your haruhi you know or whatever you want and it's like or hyoka even right i i saved a lot of shit yeah. for that's yeah. like you know worthy of note people are like that's one of those things like why did you choose Monto. Yeah. Why not? I say. Why not? I say. <laughs> Dare to <laughs> live dangerously. The eighth show is not going to be a widely critically acclaimed show. Just leave it at that. Yeah, and there's not that many of them, right? Like, I think maybe like there's like three or four. Like, that's a clue, that... right? That narrows it down pretty substantially. So you guys should be able to guess. Yeah, and it's not. I think it's also a show that's not like oh, but there's a certain fan base. Like, I think no, Amigi, yeah, Amigi, no, like Amigi Park. No. Like, I would be in the defense of Amigi Park category, in defense yeah, of yeah. to yeah. be sort of like semi-topical for a certain YouTube channel. Oh yeah! Oh <laughs> hey! There yeah! You go. Ooh, ooh! I get a hey. <laughs> it was a very subtle kind of flow. That was that was like yeah, you, you that, was me- that was meta. That was meta. That was meta. I gotta do another video about that. <laughs> oh uh, man! Yeah, so I think what? there's there's a lot of there's a lot of like good slice like uh, you know that I think anyone could recommend. So if you're if for some inexplicable yeah, reason, there's a whole drama out there. There's a whole genre out there for both romance and drama and slice of life go explore it people you don't have to live in clan ed after story it was good it was good at the time we all cried together we all knew the fuko memes and the oni chan memes that's the last word on clan ed after story and uh if you have just finished clan ed after story then you're like okay i enjoyed that i could i could do some more uh kyoto animation well there will be seven more uh and the next one's going to be well, can, like in terms of like sequentially, the next one will be Sound Euphonium. And that is literally a thing that exists right now. You can go, go check go that out. To? Yeah. And that is chock full of some of the best drama you will ever encounter. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, spoiler alert. It's my favorite KyoAni show. Um, oh, yeah. 
it, oh, yeah. it has the best girl in all of anime. <laughs> Another spoiler alert. Well, Tune in my, to in find out who that is. <laughs> uh, but I don't know if you want to talk about what's going to come up next on this channel in, in regards to uh, specifically your next? channel. With uh, I don't want to spoil it in case you don't want to, but I'm miming an action. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, the next video uh, after these two first videos Yes, you can go in the future and listen to us talk about free Eternal Summer. Yes, uh, so that will be up. Who knows how long? Who knows when this goes up? But uh, stay tuned, and in we'll the be talking future. about the future. The <laughs> future. Uh, there will be more Kyoto animation. There will be more of us talking. There will be more uh, hot takes, best girls, best couples, best, uh, you know telling you that your favorite anime is trash now 15 years later so. absolutely yeah and maybe if you um i'd kind of be curious about this if you're in the comment section because this is the thing that you know rss feeds can't do but but youtube channels can uh i would be interested to hear what people think of planet in general anyway and how it's held up for them or what was their first sort of like uh exposure to it and if oh, you could yeah, do that if you could a... leave like we could have like a feedback section tell me how Wait, like we did we didn't have a guest on this episode to tell us how clan ad is received in the modern sphere so we need you to step in dear viewer and Absolutely. tell us you know what is, you I guess think of the, clan ad. that is the thing we're going to be looking at doing in the episodes three to eight range uh as, as amazing as we are together you know uh manage a trois is always fun and uh, we'll be looking at in, in, you know injecting some new blood into our veins and into the podcast veins for later episodes after the these two initial episodes to uh spice things up again so um look forward yeah, to that as well so, so if yes if myriad colors phantom world is your favorite show of all time get at us because we'd love to hear why and that's number eight <laughs> Yay, we did it we did it Jeez, <laughs> it all right so i guess we're going to wrap things up uh, it was great i really enjoyed this i'm looking forward already to the seven other installments i hope you enjoyed it too you know what you can do if you want to help us out Leave a like uh, if you're on the YouTubes. Share it if you're on the YouTubes. Uh, there's no like button on, on, on podcasts, but you know, you can tell your friend, tell your mom about it. Maybe your grandma wants to hear about Clan Ahead. You know, it's, it's, uh, just... if, it's, if it's on Spotify or Apple iTunes, five stars, five stars. Yeah, yeah it, it's on all of those. And uh, yeah, if you didn't like it, the best thing that you can do is leave a like and comment and say, you know, I, I really didn't like, agree with it, but here's a like. I'm going to share it to all my friends because I'm so angry and they need to see it too. Um, <laughs> And Negative emotions are just as valid a, as yeah, positive Yeah, if you're emotions. a furious podcast listener, it's five stars, five stars, and then whatever you say is fine, but just leave five stars. That would be all, also greatly appreciated because uh, podcasts consume stars. I don't know why it's a thing they do, uh, but they grow yeah. through consumption of stars. So it's like <laughs> Super Mario or something like that. Uh, just imagine with uh, Starfish and Fuko will uh, be happy for you. Yeah, so again, like... I share your thoughts on clan Ed. i'm curious because it's been a minute right i am i but, generally am I, I genuinely am yes yeah. and maybe uh, we can get it, like a if we get some good feedback going maybe we can get like a feedback session on future podcasts where we can say hey we're talking about clan Ed. here's what so-and-so said you know <laughs> here's why we're wrong and he was right or she was right or they were right or it was right I, i'm oh. genuinely curious to know because uh I, yeah because you know not everyone's in our sort of headspace right like oh yeah like we said we have very limited scope so i'd love to love to get other perspectives in and we certainly will try to in the future um, yeah yata i don't know if you wanted to do this as the ending but you found a very good quote from uh clad ed after story that i happen to like very much and i think it would be very apropos as a kind of like last word on clan ed I think I can do that. It was from our... I guess we're saying he's best boy. Is that what we're saying? Oh, totally, yeah. <laughs> oh, he's by far the one of my favorite characters. Yeah, so uh, this Kyoto is from... Uh, yes, this is uh, Akio Furahara. Um, sorry, I messed up his name there. This is Akio, uh, Nagisa's dad. He's in the image. He's holding a croissant, having a cigarette, and he drops this bar of knowledge. He says, we didn't give up our dreams. We changed our dreams into your dreams. That's what parents do. That's what families do. And that's what we just did. So until next time for our listeners, for our viewers, for everybody, I hope you have a good life and we'll see you in uh, the band for San Euphonium. Hey. Bye bye. I love you. Bye. bye.